Alrighty, good. So, uh, guys, thank you for joining me here tonight. Um, we're on the regular camera, the other camera, and it looks like this guy's just going to be pushed over to the side. There we go. Good to go. Alrighty, sorry about that. Um, if anybody knows why certain particular can certain particular programs continue to just go ahead and pop up, as yes, it's almost as if we have a keylogger somewhere installed on our machines now. So. Um, it's not necessarily the most fun thing to deal with, especially when something out there uh, decides to uh, make software that doesn't work as well as it should. But, be that as it may, we'll continue to press on despite people like that in this world. Anywho, thank you guys for joining me here again tonight. Um, tonight's just going to be a quick one, quick little update, and then I get it back to work. Um, Couple things have happened this week for those people who are looking to are looking to try and get in touch with Carl. Um, as of right now, he is still over in China and will continue to be do so and be so for the next couple of days. So more than likely, uh, in the next broadcast we, he will be here, um, which will be next Sunday's broadcast. Next, uh, for those of you who've been looking for recipes, I have the recipes for 100, 200, 300 microns fully fully dialed in. Um, not 100% optimized, but they're pretty darn good, and they work perfectly for uh, for Slicer, for Slick 3R. Um, it will take me some more time, and spend a little more time on the 25 micron, the 50 micron, and the other, the other types of, of um, Slicer settings as well. <clears throat> also, all of us are getting over a little bit of the sickness here, um, including uh, those of us who are overseas. So, um, forgive me if I'm not in the best of, of all moods. Um, actually, having the, uh, the, the computer go down and then having to try and re reboot it and do all that stuff is not necessarily the most fun thing to do. But you can come here to hear me say all that stuff. What you want to hear is shipping. We didn't ship out anything last week. We ship out, uh, we're planning on shipping things, probably about six items at the very least this week. Um, of those, only um, only it's going to be only one engine and five systems. There's five systems that were supposed to go out uh, this past week. But due to reworks and those particular types of items that were overlooked, They have been, for the most part, fixed. I say for the most part because there's always one that's going to pop up underneath this table, and it's always going to get installed, and then, oh, ha, 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 ha. So um, those types of things um, will no longer be tolerated. And um, because I can't, ha I can't handle this like that anymore. So, uh, for those of you who are looking to, for us to help you out, we will continue to help you out as best we can, as, as time permitting. As of right now, if you guys need help, I don't have any problem continuing to help you guys out at night, um, after 7 o'clock. Um, but as of right now, my time is quite limited, and our time is limited. So, um, the more time we spend helping you guys out in one instance, uh, the longer it's going to take, or answering emails, the longer it's going to take for us to actually put these guys together, get them 100% right, and get them out the door to you. Now, this is going to sound really harsh tonight, guys. I don't mean for it to be so, but that just is the way that it is. So, um, that's where we are. That's what we have. Um, I'll answer any questions you guys have in the next five to ten minutes, and then that's it. And then that's it for tonight. So, um, yeah. I don't have enough time as of right now to write a manual. If, um, to continue to write the manual in this case, if I'm consist consistently getting questions. So, um, so if you guys need my help over the next day or so, it may be a little bit hard. So just to let you guys know, for the very first three or four days from now, if you're trying to get in touch with me, it might be a little bit more difficult. I don't, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not that I'm trying to avoid you guys. It's for the fact that I've got to get this manual done. I've got to get this in your hands so that you guys can, can, can continue, continue to move forward and be successful. 
but I need the time. I really truly do. So, um, Dave will be returning from his vacation this coming uh, Tuesday, so he can help you out at, at the time as well. But um, that's where we are. We have quite a few more systems that we're putting together, as you guys can see right here, and um, quite a few over there which are still printing and printing off. So just know that we're still on the job. We're going to be here through to the very end and uh, making it happen. So. So I'm not seeing any questions, um, but um, there's nothing more to report at this particular point in time. Uh, when it comes to research and development, we are going to be going almost 100% cold turkey, and not, by saying we're not going to be saying anything, we're not going to be just just talking about things here and there. Um, and um, because uh, certain particular ones of you who are viewers, most, most, most specifically the lurkers who are watching these broadcasts, um, who are of certain particular companies who are out there that we know of who are watching this, um, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to go through the proper channels in order to find out what it is that we're doing. Uh, let's music. What kind of requests uh, for help are you getting? A lot of the types of good, great question. A lot of the questions that we have are over the training class stuff that we went that we covered. Some of the stuff we covered, some of the stuff we didn't cover because as because we got better and better and better over the training classes. One such thing is people were having problems with their prints when it comes to shifting, when it comes to fail, print failures. A lot of the times. Actually, almost every, no, I, I take that back. Every printer that has gone out has gone out with the wrong slicer settings. I'm sorry, but for those of you guys who have that, they've, they have the wrong slicer settings. There's one or two little tweaks that were never ever fixed, and so what you guys got was the more experimental. So we pushed these things out as fast as we could. That was one of the things that needed to be fixed. So I fixed those when it comes to the 100, the 200, and 300 micron prints. We're finding more and more that people are not uh, are not looking to do any kind of experimentation with their machines to be able to have that kind of flexibility. So more and more, um, you guys are looking for, or I'm not you guys, but um, more and more people are asking for things to be completely dialed in, not having to tweak and fix and um, and do those types of things. So. I'm dialing it in as simple as possible so you click whatever settings you want, click print or click slice, you click print, and you go from there. Um, a lot of things that are overlooked for the request for help or, or that we're getting requests for help in those shifts are people are not setting the G1 speed uniform or they're going way too fast. And the G1 speed uniforms, uh, G1 speed uniform button that we have inside of your uh, inside for a patrol over on the right hand side is typically to be used to remove those irregular fast moves which cause these issues. There is plenty, and I do mean plenty of times. Sorry. Um, there are times, there are plenty and plenty and plenty of times whereby um, the slicer set, setup that you have requires you to use the G1 speed uniform. And that is the battle that I have been fighting. I finally figured out what was causing it. Inside your slicer settings specifically, um, the speed for the travel moves I think was at 40 millimeters per second. And the machines currently cannot handle 40 millimeters per second. 25 is about the, fast you want, the fastest you want to go with 200 and 300 microns. For 100 microns, you're looking at roughly about 16. As I, and that's for, for good quality finishes, as I continue to figure out 
what has to be done. I will continue to give updates to you guys as fast as, as fast as I can. I'll be working with Dave over this coming Tuesday or and or Wednesday to put up the right to put up the best recipes possible for for Slicer up on our wiki. At that point in time, you'll be able to download and I also have to work on the documentation to pull that together to give you guys to show you where it is the correct place to put those inside of what you currently have. So, it's, those are the typical requests that we're getting, and um, getting, you know, you know, phone calls are great, and Yolman, Yol that's fine, you know, your phone calls are great, but we're, we're finding more and more that if I, that if we were to give you a video, or if we were to give you a piece of documentation that actually would show you those individual items that you would have to continue to, to, to give us a call. Not that we don't want you guys to call us. We love the fact whenever you guys call us and you say, look, this is working great. Um, that's what we want. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to give you guys what you need, which is the, the, rights, the right stuff to be able to go forward with that. So um, this is my fault, and I'm owning it. So, I have the fixes, and every, everybody's machines going out the door uh, from here going forward will have all the right settings in place. And it'll be easy to pick and choose and go forward with. So, um, I just apologize that um, I wasn't able to get it out in time for, for all the Kickstarters that have gone out the door already. So, hi Vipers. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so... Overspeeding is a huge, huge issue, and um, what basically is happening is that the speed that you're going at, you're traveling at on the actual yoke or even on the um, the X, the X bed going back and forth, is too fast. Uh, the, the, it's just think about going, you know, running in one direction and then immediately going at ninety degrees and maintaining. Um, the same, uh, the same course, the same meaning going 90 degrees, going at the same speed, and you have to overcome the that amount of physics. Um, that's the problem that every 3D printer out there has currently today, not just us. So, um, bound type of extruders that are out there um, have a less of a problem because there's less mass of a head. But the problem is, is that when it comes to retraction, that becomes an even bigger issue. So there's a yin and yang to all of these individual items. So we're setting the speeds slow, and we'll be fine from there. One note about the materials. <clears throat> I was able to slice and print with white ABS. I know a lot of people are out, out there have been asking about Sane Smart. The white ABS does work just fine with the current settings that, that, that I have set up for the 300, the 200, and the 100 micron setups. I've tried out all of them. So, um, for those of you who are currently using white, I would really interesting have to take a look at the G-code. More than likely, what I'm going to find with the G-code is those fast travel moves that need to be fixed. So, okay. Where's the only six one? Twenty-five millimeters per second. I'm sorry, not twenty-five millimeters per minute. Erisian. Uh, the speed can always be increased. Erisian. Uh, he asks, it might be increased by the software changes. Um, it might be increased by the software changes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if so, uh, how much do you think it can it can pick up? We've run these machines, we run all these guys at 7,000 millimeters per minute, which is quite a bit more. It's close, it's getting very close to 100 millimeters per second. Um, actually, you no, know, it's more than, it's, that's more than 100 millimeters per second. So, um, we can get up to that, to that speed. That's not a problem. These machines can go up to, can travel up to those speeds. But in order for it to get, get to a certain, certain particular corner and then bounce off from there is a challenge. It really truly is a challenge. So, 
rather than speak out of turn, um, we'll have to cover that once we have a fix in place. Um, so yes, so we'll be able to go a lot faster. And or might, uh, from it might be increased by minor hardware modif modifications uh, to these machines. Hardware modifications, we would have to, the only way to do this, the only way to do it in that particular fashion, um, it gets to the point where you have to start taking the weight and removing a lot more weight from the head and move, removing a lot more weight from the bed by itself as well. Where we currently are today, um, that's not one of the highest priorities, unfortunately, but it is one of, one of the priorities. So um, we'll have to cover that a little bit further down the line. Let's see. If so, how much do you anticipate all at this time? Yeah. Okay. So. Right now, just remember 25 millimeters per, not per minute, but per second, which is 1,500 millimeters per minute, which is what the G1 speed uniform set as the, as the default on your machines. That's the one we're shipping. We are telling everybody to use for everything that's 200 and above. Vipers, can you replace all the G code to be constant? Uh, search by edit. That's what. That's actually what the G1 speed uniform code does. Um, so after you've sliced, it's a post-processing technique that you can do for any G code, for any G code, and um, here again, it's part part of the documentation that I've already written. Thankfully, raising um, or is getting any appreci appreciable speed going to require upgrade to the next version of these machines? Raising, I don't think um, I cannot say it this time. I I really truly cannot say it this time. And the reason why I cannot say it this time for that is for a couple of number of reasons. Um, of which I would have to discuss with you offline. So, um, for some of the things. So, for some of the other ones, uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted to be a lot more deeper in detail. Um... It is our aim and our goal with these machines to get them as fast as possible. I cannot guarantee that you'll be printing reliably. Actually, I can guarantee you right now you will not be printing reliably at 7,000 millimeters per minute with the current slicers today. The slicers that we're working on, you will be able to in the future. So the same machine will be able to go up and will be appreciably faster. But for right now, do not count on it. Not until the software is in place. The slicers are good, and we're to that point where we can actually release that, that information. But as we said in the Kickstarter campaign, this is this you know when it comes to the, the to the software, it's going to be five years worth of free software updates. Um, so your machine is just getting, is going to continue to get better and better and better at that point. Okay. Excuse me, I have white IBS working here. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Les. Um, Yeoman, maybe single head yoke or something for fast prints. Um, <clears throat> that is one way of, of, of doing it. Yes, absolutely, Yeoman. And we, when we initially looked at, at doing, when we actually, when we initially did the Kickstarter, we only had two positions in the yoke instead of, only, instead of the total number of four that we had for the yoke. What we're finding right now is that, I mean, if we were to chop off those other two, I'm not sure how much weight it would be removing from the actual yoke by itself. And I'm not sure if that would speed it up one way or the other. So I can't speak to that. But that's a good idea. Less, uh, I limit my print speed to 20 millimeters per second unless the part I design to be friendly uh, to a faster speed, I've had success as high as 35 millimeters per second. Thank you. Um, uh, and I believe Yeoman has had success um, printing at 500 microns at four, 40 millimeters per second, if I'm not mistaken, Yeoman. So uh, those of you who are continuing to go out there and experiment, thank you very much for, for doing so. 
um, okay. So um, that's where we are today. Um, I'll answer more questions if you, if you guys uh, have them in the next, you know, minutes. And um, yeah. We've just got to continue to, I just have to continue to carve out time. Um, so, um, oh, software updates. For those people who want to know about the software updates, they're not ready just as of yet. But I will not be getting them anytime soon. There are a few of you who are out there who have who are part of the beta, beta testers who are out there. Um, you guys will be getting the latest and the greatest software before I will. Carl wants to run through a couple of things with you guys first, and I believe that's very very wise, because some of you provide feedback that that I cannot. As much as I use these machines uh, to print the parts which go on your machines, um, there are certain things that because I'm so close to the product. I don't see them, and it's a very, very wise move by Carl in order to get to get you guys, um, which I think there's about four or five of you who are going to be involved in this, um, to give us uh, feedback that you guys know because you've been intimately acquainted with machines. So. So. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. So. Uh, as such, when Carl returns, which should be um, later this week, like toward the, toward the latter end of this week, um, he'll be reaching out to you guys uh, with the new firmware, with the new software, and is going to be asking you, you your opinions. So, um, let's see. I'm printing out Tomlin. Oh, excellent, excellent X ray Charlie. Um, wow. Awesome. Love it. Yeoman. I have a question. Uh, is the camera only uh, for Repetrell? Um, the camera, as of, as of right now, Yeoman, just so, just so you know, and this is one thing that, that, that uh, I believe we covered. Um, and a couple of other classes with some with some other people. Uh, so I need to I need to repeat it to you because you you got one of the machines before we were able to uh, to tell people about this. The camera, every one of these machines has a camera that's been installed inside of it, so that you can actually take a look at, at a section of your print while while you're away. And that um, ability is built in currently into this into everybody's software. However, it is very very buggy. You can turn it on. But I haven't figured out how to turn it off. For those of you who are going to be using the printers with another computer, and you're not going to be using TeamViewer or Skype or Real VNC, um, even Skype may have issues. But I know Real VNC does not, and I know yeah, I've tested with, with TeamViewer, and TeamViewer does not. Um, you can use either one of those in order to see. On the inside and get control of the of the camera. Now, for those of you who are plugging into the side of the machine with your USB, that is too much signal to continue to run the machine along with looking at the camera um, as as I am aware of today. So um, off the off the unit that we've been training off of, because I have tested that. So so if you want to use the camera, you definitely can. There's a camera tab that's inside Repetrell, uh, alpha, build, alpha build version number 33, that everybody has out there, that will allow you to actually see the camera and the camera running. Um, so that's where we are right now. Uh, Skype. Like I said, Skype, I haven't tried Skype yet, Yeoman, so um, it may work, it may not work. Uh, I'll, I'll have to double check that. Um, yeah, less the T-Glaze does take, does, does take some time. 
Um, sometimes the Talman does. It usually takes um, the last last batch we got from Talman took roughly about uh, three days to get to us, but the times before took um, as long as two to three weeks. So just know that if you guys are going out there and buying the nylons from, from Talman, Talman, they work fantastic. So Talman, if you're watching, you've done a fantastic job. Um, but uh, there are times where it just takes it takes a while for it to get get you know to us. But you know he's making the stuff. He or she is making the stuff as fast as possible. So, okay, uh, Vipers. Any update on delivery for the E5? Um, you know, <laughs> send me an email, and I'll see where you where you currently are on the queue, and um, we can go from there. So email us at hirel 3 d at gmail .com and we'll go. We'll go for next week. Charlie, I've written some software to grab frames from the camera, but the position doesn't seem to be in a great position to see the print as it is happening. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, X-ray Charlie is is 100% correct. Um, it is rather difficult because the camera is not angled. Uh, in such a fashion that's going to work just fine. The way that we were initially looking at this was not the way that it should have been looked at. So I'm just going to say that and leave it as, as that. Um, we engineered things a little bit too fast and did not look at the full user experience when we put them together in that particular regard. You can see a portion of the build, but you cannot see all of the build unless, of course, you move the yoke and the bed out of the printing angle in order to see what's there. We do not currently have a fix for that at this time. Okay, Yeoman says, right now, I'm just snapping pictures up uh, with an uh, XP thing. Skype you stream and YouTube does, does not pick up the camera. The only reason why I want to check my print is to see if it's printing. HD, um, you or the first layer. Had a few, but the first layer would just stop. Yep, that is the acknowledged code failure. Mm -hmm. um, the acknowledged code failures for everybody who's look, who's has been fighting this particular battle along with us um, in the firmware and software. The acknowledged codes that. Um, and that's what, that's what Carl's been, been fighting. Everything that gets communicated from the PC that we have today into the electronics on the back works flawlessly on the latest version. On the latest version of the firmware, there were no, and I mean zero, absolutely purely zero, acknowledged code errors. From the, from the uh, electronics in the back to the electronics on the top to the heads, acknowledged code issues exist everywhere. A lot of things that Kuro Carl has been working on has been to rebuild completely certain particular areas of the firmware and the software to get it to function to a point whereby the knowledge codes would be completely eliminated. It's currently still true today from what I currently know. So, um, Okay, Eurasian, why not uh, just update the spreadsheet so we know where we are in the queue? That's because there are also, Eurasian, very good question is because there's also pre-orders who are also out there. The only thing that's currently in the queue that's out there today is what we've promised the Kickstarters. So all the people who are out there, I'm Vipers, I'm not sure if you are Kickstarter or not. If you are Kickstarter, that's one thing. If you're not, then I can't say. So, um... Here again, Erisian is, is about finding time 